गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन गुड इवनिंग गाइंग्स विल स्टार्ट द सेशन इन अ मिनट यस 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 Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Venkatna English Guru. Friends, show me thumbs up. Show me thumbs up if my voice is clear, okay, and if my voice is audible to you. Quick, friends. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Yes, friends. We are actually talking about restoration and new class. We have just started. neo classical period okay neo classical period we we had a class introduction class with regard to neo classical literature next we'll be talking about one important age that is restoration age in this uh, class so before i go into the class let me ask a few questions with regard to the neo classical age the period from 1660 to 1785 is or 85 or 98 is considered to be the neo classical period i will say some statement you can say me the answer there is a close connection between the neo classical age and the classical age uh, of german uh, sorry the classical age of greece and rome is it true or false you can say yes or no quick quick my friends so if you are so quick so that yes true yes so literature literature according to neo classical writers meant imitation of uh, uh, literature refers to art is for art sake or poetry should be written for poet sake do you think is it's true or false come on friends you need to answer this literature meant literature should be written for literature sake art art is for art sake do you accept is it true or false yeah it's false because literature or art should be always for humanity sake according to the who are the primary objects of writing literature who are the primary objects of writing literature primary themes of writing literature according to the neo classical period yes can somebody answer this question who are the primary source for writing literature okay writing literature human beings wonderful human beings are the primary source so literature should be always written about the human beings it should not be about non living things or characters wonderful and most and neo classical literature is all about uh, imitating traditionalism or creating in or are innovating a new can somebody answer is it just imitating the imitating the tradition traditionalism or creating new can somebody yes traditionalism that's what and one of the popular books that is composed by one classical writer horace that becomes a source for writing literature to neo classical writers what is the title of the book yes can somebody answer what is the title of the book that inspired all the classical all the neo classical writers hard poetica wonderful according to classical or according to neo classical writers literature should be written poetry should be written literature should be written for two major purposes 
what are they yes can somebody answer according to horace or according to classical according to neoclassical every piece of literature has to be written for two purposes instruction and pleasure wonderful wonderful this is what very important for us instruction and pleasure yes wonderful my friends yes delight and instruction wonderful yes during this period most of the literature was written about i'll give option literature was about literature was written about sophisticated people or middle class people or poor class people or common people yes can somebody answer this question most of the literature that is composed during this period composed during this period was about sophisticated or orthodox or middle class people or poor people or common people yes sophisticated people of england yes this is very important so the process of writing literature should always include certain models and to be and during this period during neoclassical period different forms of literature was so popular like epic like a tragedy and like uh, different other aspects satire irony parodies parody which is also called pastiche very important these terms are going to be yes and uh, uh, do, and who are the popular important uh, classical writers i cannot say but you need to remember them yesterday i told you a quote to remember uh, three important classical writers okay one popular quote that i told you and can somebody say what is that quote spa yes yes and uh, homer ovid horace were very popular poets during the reign of uh, uh, augustus next yesterday i also told you one of the popular writers who coined a, a different word but i will tell you the writer longinus and he wrote a wonderful book what is the title of the book can somebody say longinus is known for a popular book and popular poetic technique what the, what is that poetic technique and sublimity wonderful wonderful sublimity what is the title of the book what is the title of the book yes friends what is the title of the book wonderful pande and on the sublime this is very important metamorphosis metamorphosis is a popular poem iliad and odyssey were the popular poems these are composed by iliad and odyssey which are a popular which are popular epics composed in greece later that were translated into english by alexander alexander pope became so popular only by translating these two and who is the author of iliad and odyssey yes who is the author of iliad and odyssey yes friends come on friends homer yes very very important aeneid aeneid a e n e i d aeneid it's a popular poem and elegy written by one of the popular poets of a uh, uh, classical age yes virgil wonderful wonderful because these are very important who wrote aeneid who wrote and iliad odyssey who wrote metamorphoses who is the author of on the sublime who is the author of the and the republic who is the author of and, and poetics so these are very important things and when you go for uh, criticism mainly okay i'll talk about in detail aspects some of the students they are asking me to prepare some take some classes on this criticism i will definitely take see my intention is that i want to teach you the best thing because this is going to be on the internet for a long time so i don't want to spoil my name my uh, caliber or whatever i can say so if i make some video in not in a good manner then first thing i don't feel comfortable so posting certain aspects but uh, i am getting a lot of uh, messages from the students to have some classes because they are going to write a net examination in the month of uh, october itself so don't worry about it i will also prepared some specific videos on some short uh, videos how you can prepare uh, best in a better way in short time 
uh, to focus on chapter 5 or 6 or 7 or 8 or 9. Very shortly, I will prepare maybe very short videos like 10 to 15 minutes videos in future. And you can also, apart from these classes, but I don't want to stop these classes. I want to continue uh, till December 31st. So I promise you that definitely I'll continue all these classes. Every day we will have a momentum. And you have to prepare for this examination in a proper way. Okay, forget about. Now we'll go into the topic. Friends, yesterday, as I told you, the concept of neoclassism, the period from 1660 to 1798, this has been subdivided into three periods. 1660 to 1700, which you can say restoration. And 1700 to 1745, age of Augustus. 1745 to 1798, age of sensibility, age of sensibility, which is also called age of Johnson, age of Augustus, age of Pope, restoration, and age of Dryden. And, and today, in our discussion, and we are actually talking about restoration age and age of age of John Dryden. First, we need to understand restore. First, rest, restoration, restoring. Why, why do you think the uh, humanists, the experts of literature used the word restore? And what made the writers uh, to use this word restoration? And what was actually restored? What do you think was actually restored during this period? And what made them? What were the problems? What and what did the Englishmen actually lose in their life before 1660. So we had a long discussion, my friends. 1500 to 1660, people wanted liberty, individuality, freedom in their life, first thing, in their thoughts and about their religion, about their culture. And this, see, and when people want to have a lot of individuality that usually leads to destruction. Remember, when you want to have individuality, say today you say and you are kids and when you are kids and now you have a lot of kids, I think so. So you have, you have different and dependent people and they depend on you for some particular period. But afterwards, what will happen? They expect a certain individuality. Then what do you do? And you will have a lot of pain and your heart aches because you think, I provided all education. I provided all court cloths. I provided shelter. I provided everything since his birth. But what happened? And once he got 26, 27 or 30, once she got 20 or 30 or 30 and 25 or 30, and she fell in love and got married and left my home, left home and leaving me in this world, leaving me alone. You will have this feeling because they uh, run after, they look for their own individual ideas. They don't give any priority for what we usually, what we have actually uh, what kind of pains we had actually. They don't bother about and they leave and you will have certain feelings. In the same way, 1500 to 1660, people fought for individual rights. People fought for freedom. People wanted autonomy. See, you, yeah, everybody, not for example, some of my, and directly I'm talking to, and some of women, uh, I, I can say a lot of women watching this watching my video. Why, why are you watching all this? Because you want financial individuality. You want social individuality. Yes or no? And people want identity. People want individuality. Maybe social individuality, cultural individuality, financial individuality, maybe anything else. So that's what you try for something and you do something, you work for something. And same thing, and was done by all the people during renaissance and and you don't find any control of the authority what was authority the church what was authority the king what was authority the bible even the bible was rejected and the court audits were rejected and the king there was no control of the king even charles I was beheaded because that kind of individuality people expected 
and it this this is on one side one side of the coin but on the other side people had a lot and there was cultural degradation there was moral degradation there was a religious degradation because they violated the standards of religion that's what i i say because as a student of literature i i developed some or some some certain beliefs okay uh, having read literature for more than uh, 16 or 17 years i cultivated certain principles you need to for example we believe believe entire the world is moving forward only based on one idea what is that belief we believe in religion we believe in god we have not seen him or her but we have certain feelings and that kind of abstract feeling which is cultivated in our minds from our parents from our grandparents from our ancestors then though you are in this 21st world global world still and more than 70 or 80% of the people in the world believe almight remember and and why there are a number of destructions today only because of and the number of people who are not able to who do not have this belief and started creating all this chaos and you can guess and uh, you can guess about that so that's what you you need to be, you need to cultivate the concepts of belief in your culture in your religion first in your family and first in your religion first in your culture first in your society first in your community but this what happened during renaissance there was a degradation there was a degradation of cultural values degradation of moral values degradation of ethical values for example how are you going to improve moral and ethical values if you don't believe in religion if you don't believe in the almighty the jesus that's what what happened people wanted in the name of individuality or autonomy a lot of problems were created at the grassroots level and as a result the family system collapsed and there was no one to one relationship good and a good kind of relationship and everything wanted some kind of ex- everything and everybody expected something from someone so that created and degradation of moral values so that's what this period 1660 to 700 the the intelligentsia the intellectuals of the time 1660 to 700 and because the major responsibility of these poets and writers dramatists is they write a lot of literature to cultivate moral values to cultivate cultural social moral ethical values among the people that is the major idea mainly of the dramatist of the poets during this period restore and during this period a number of writers like john dryden jonathan swift william congreve william wycherley sir the ethology sir john vambro john nicolier john john bunyan john locke and john milton all these are various writers and they understood what did they under, what did they understand they understood that the cult, there was a cultural degradation there was a and moral degradation there was a ethical degradation the and uh, the the traditional systems were violated demolished indirectly by in the name of individuality in the name of autonomy then what is to be done what is our responsibility we need to restore what we have lost what what values we have lost we need to cultivate among those people through our plays through our poetry that is what the name restoration remember okay friends next and what is restoration you want marks okay you want marks and i was into academics and for more than 5 to 10 minutes now you require what you require examination orientation so the period restoration age this is also called age of dryden because john dryden was the major important writer during this period and john dryden and john dryden is considered to be the first critic in english literature and father of english criticism okay first critic in english literature and father of english criticism where he spoke about a few techniques of uh, critic uh, critiquing different texts next the restoration of stuart line charles the 2 and the son of charles the 1 
who fled after Charles I was beheaded and his son Charles II and he becomes the king in 1660. He was invited by the intellectuals of England, intellectuals of Great Britain and, and where he becomes the king. But we need to understand again, it becomes a kind of restoration. Charles II was actually, there was a controversy between two important uh, people, Protestants and uh, Catholics, Anglicans and Puritans, you know. Okay, so Protestants are Puritans or Anglicans are Catholics. And there is a controversy. And, and these Protestants, they expected a kind of equality among the people, individuality among the people. And these people in the name of church, in the name of Bible, in the name of uh, authority, exploited the common wishes. And uh, we have gone through a lot. Next, this Charles II, who was a staunch and uh, member of this Catholicism or Anglicanism, after Charles I was beheaded and uh, escaped, ran away from London, from England to other part of the world. After Oliver Cromwell's death, the intellectuals of England and they believed that it is impossible for us to and rule our country. It is only possible in the blood of the kings and queens and princes. What needs to be done? We need to again invite the son of Charles I, Charles II. And he comes and is requested. And first we need to understand this fellow who is the son of Charles I and who was a very strong Catholic and he, he disappeared from 1649 to 1660 for more than 11 years. Again, he was invited to the Great Britain and after he comes back and he, he promises that he is going to take care of everybody. Not, he is not going to show any difference between the Catholics and Protestants but in the name of, but in in disguise and internally what will happen this fellow and he goes on and giving a lot of punishments to different people who supported Oliver Cromwell. That happens during this period. That's what this is the age of bloodless revolution, glorious revolution which takes place in 1684 and 1688. Very, very important one. And and his son, James II, the dethroning of James II, which becomes the bloodless revolution, the greatest revolution in England. So, Charles II, who becomes the king in 1660, and he rules and uh, Britain till 1684 until his death. And 1660 to 1700, this is called restoration. And during this period, you can find urbanity. And the, the concept of giving a lot of importance to urbanes and wit. A lot of wit, urbanity, where literature was only about sophisticated people, orthodox communities, not about the common people, not about ordinary people, not about the lives of poor, poor classes. No, only urban classes and their tradition, their lifestyle, their activities. And immortality, immorality, yes, immorality. You don't find any moral values among the people. That's what the word restoration. And seriousness, most of the literature is all about serious in nature. And friends, we have all already discussed the concept of seriousness was actually brought from the classical literature. If you are writing tragedy, you should be always serious. Next. And temperance, a kind of giving importance, equality, showing equality among the people. The theatres came back to vigorous life. We have gone through in 1642, Theatres were closed. All public theatres were closed by Puritans, Protestants. And these theatres came into life in 1660. These theatres were opened in 1660. I remember this. So, communities. Next, friends. And Dryden, Thomas, Thomas Otway. And you, you, you can see some of the important writers, Dryden, Thomas Otway developed a tragedy called Heroical Drama. They were greatly influenced by what? The classical the classical tragedy, which, which was popularized by Aristophanes, Achilles, Sophocles, Euripides, and Seneca, very popular uh, classical tragedy experts. And uh, this was imitated by these two important dramatists. One was John Dryden and another, another one, Thomas Otway. And who developed heroic drama. Friends, I told you as a part of my discussions in my previous videos on 
prosody what is heroic heroic refers to iambic pentameter lines without rhyme scheme so this drama is composed in blank words heroic drama which means that drama is composed in blank words blank verse which means iambic pentameter lines without rhyme scheme so the process of writing using blank words which was continued by elizabethan and renaissance writers and it was also adapted by some of the and not some of the most of the dramatists during restoration and neoclassical period dryden was the major poet john dryden was the major important poet after the death of uh, uh, john and uh, ben johnson john skelton becomes the uh, poet laureate next he becomes the poet laureate and as the major poet critic and one of the major dramatists and major critic friends remember and he was the one who created the concept of criticism that's what you need to get the idea father of english criticism and other poets were satirists this is the age of satires ironies and mock epics parodies pastiches samuel butler and earl of rochester another some of the important satirists next friends you can see and during this period you can find a wonderful comedy called restoration comedy which is also called comedy of manners i told you what is drama types of drama types of comedy in that i gave you elaborated discussion about this comedy of manners and you see important writer john dryden william congre william wycherley sir john etherji sir john vambro so all these are very important writers William Wycherley, William Congreve, Sir John Etherji, John Dryden, Sir Sir John Vanbrew, and John Dryden is the leader, major presentative writer, and Jeremy Corrie Collier, and he he was the writer not associated with the comedy of manners, but he wrote literature to make comment, to make critique of comedy of manners. So there were plenty of bits in previously, a short view of profaneness and immortality on the English stage. composed in 1693 or 98 i forgot the date 16 and 90s which is written by jeremy collier to make comment on william congreve to make comment on sir john vanbrew remember this because this featured several times and comedy of manners which is also called a restoration comedy next friends what is this comedy about and i'm giving you some brief introduction i gave you a detailed elaborate discussion as a part of my a uh, discussion with regard to unit 2 drama and comedy and types so you see restoration comedy in famous for sexual explicitness the major theme of uh, comedy of manners is all about sex illicit relationships unfaithful relationships between wife and husband and uh, and husband and wife and uh, in society in different uh, genders sexual intrigue and conquest and repartees double meaning dialogues that you can find as a part next obscurity and cultural perceptions great social change a strong middle class element because mainly middle class and sophisticated class of people they cultivated the habit of having maintaining a number of illicit relationships you find plenty of quotations like if you don't cheat women you will be cheated by women so if you don't want to be cheated first start cheating your wife you you read wonderful dialogues uh, when you read the place called the way of the world the country wife the tender husband like next strong middle class middle class people like the war between sexes this is in comedy of manners and there is a war between sexes from the arena of intrigue because they hide their relationships they don't show outside they maintain and the story revolves around all these intrigues the focus on marital relationships after the wedding bells the give and take set pieces of couples still testing their attraction of each other so they make a number of repartees repartee which means double meaning dialogues give and take and promise of scene in the way of the world the popular scene once you watch this you will get all that so you watch a lot of movies in uh, in our indian movie and the family oriented where the characters are uh, develop though they are married and they look for some someone else later by the end of the movie they recognize that and we should not cheat someone if you cheat someone you will be also cheated so cheating is a, a it, it's a mistake like 
next that is what all about i gave a detailed discussion you can watch it if you require next friends in prose yes this is the time of prose during this period at the beginning of english prose beginning of english novel beginning of english magazines so dryden samuel pepys sir william temple these were the major important uh, writers dryden john dryden samuel pepys sir william temple were the other important writers who wrote a number of critical essays the, and the religious poet writer john bunyan a very important writer writer who wrote the pilgrim's progress there are three important novels my friends robinson crusoe by daniel defoe and the pilgrim's progress by john bunyan and the gulliver's travels by jonathan swift these three are considered to be the pre novel narratives the first prose novels in english literature so this is going to be the age of prose beginning of prose and with the help of john bunyan robinson crusoe daniel defoe and uh, jonathan swift and the philosopher john locke very very important john locke was the major important important philosopher who coined the word enlightenment the word enlightenment and which is popularized by john locke and where enlightenment the process of using a lot of inductive thinking the process of using thinking inductive thinking didact didactism inductive thinking deductive thinking problem solving abilities in the process of reading something doing something and to solve problems of the society and during this period you find one of the first major important novelists after ben after ben first english women novelist elizabeth carey in in our previous period where we spoke about the first women dramatist the tragedy of meriam the first drama that is composed by a woman english women dramatist remember all that so the first and the women novelist afra bain and she is known for a popular novel and what is the theme of this novel net oriented bit my friends urunoko urunoko this is the tragic story of the noble african slave an important precursor of the novel by afra bain the first novel and this novel is about slavery this novel is about african american slavery african american american slavery and the first literature when we deal with african literature or african not african african american or american literature most of the literature during at the beginning was is all about slavery and this is the first important novel written by afra bain or no co talks about and the problems of african american slavery okay and african american slave and urnoko where she spoke about and discussed and during this period next friends and the earl of rochester another important uh, writer the earl of rochester and a real life restoration rake courier and courtier poet is flatteringly portrayed in Etherji's Man of Mord. Etherji, Sir George Etherji, who wrote a drama, Man of Mord. There is a close connection. As a righteous, witty, intellectual, and sexually irresistible aristocrat, template for and posterity. So, the, these are the two: the Earl of Rochester and the Man of Mord, where they spoke about the conditions of the Restoration Age and the concepts of sex, the concept of urbanity, the concepts of employing. aristocratic uh, characters in terms of producing a drama which are list the plain dealer plain dealer is, which is another important play composed by william wycherley next which is an example for restoration comedy a, a variation on the theme of maurice le misanthrope misanthrope you know one who hates human beings was highly regarded for its uncompromising satire it's a satire that's what my friends most of the writers during this period wrote literature that becomes example for a kind of gentle satire on the human beings to correct their manners already i told you horace directly said there are only two major purpose of writing literature one is for delight or pleasure second one is for instruction or correction so most of the literature most of the plays that are composed for example the plain dealer or man of mod these are the plays that are composed to correct the manners of the people 
okay to instruct the people what is good what is bad to promote to cultivate cultural values moral values what we what they have actually lost satire earned wickedly the appellation plain dealer wickedly or manly wickedly after the place main character manly so uh, the manly which manly you can identify manly so as a human being you need to be and what should be your feelings what should be your a uh, behavior so that's what he talks about in this a kind of satire every dialogue is going to be the representative neo classical writer and i think we have gone through this next with regard to certain important uh, dates what are the important dates of uh, our uh, during this period and john milton also john milton composed during this period his major what sorry john milton this is the age of john milton's epics john milton composed two popular important epics the battle lost and pad is regained during this period and uh, this is also the period of bloodless revolution and uh, during this period you can find john milton's milton's epics and the popular epics are the battle lost and the pad is regained the pad is lost and the paradise regained which is act which is actually a sequel and this is also the period of england's bloodless revolution 1980s sorry 1684 and 1688 english revolution revolution so during this period due to so as i told you and john milton's epics the pad is lost and the pad is regained and there is a lot to talk about at least short summaries that i want to talk about at least some basic idea about uh, this the pad is lost and pad is regained because once you qualify net or set what do you do you want to be a jl or dl or a part in lecturer then you definitely should have some basic knowledge of this pad is regained pad is lost and that's what i'll speak about this and in in a brief manner next this age restoration this is also the age of english revolution english revolution which you can say blood bloodless revolution or glorious revolution people people call it 1684 the death of charles ii and 1688 james the ii becomes the leader becomes the king in 1684 and 1688 and his activities become and very cruel to the common people and that uh, that leads to have a kind of revolution another revolution in england and by the end of 1688 two political parties were established tory and whigs tories and whigs two important political parties were established after 1688 now the power is in the hands of two one is the church another one is the parliament so uh, from during renaissance most of the humanists they wanted the power should be in the hands of uh, parliament that became a reality after 1688 with the establishment of two important political parties tory and whigs that is what we'll be talking about so that is what the major impact how politics influenced uh, english literature how social structures influenced english literature and how and uh, and what made john milton to talk about and the pad is lost and pad is regained what is paradise according to john milton so all this will have a discussion as a part of this this is what i wanted to talk about in today's discussion uh, and we'll be meeting in our next class where i'll talk about a detailed view about uh, important dates and major discussion with regard to up uh, the paddle lost the paddle lost and the pilgrims progress and uh, about uh, revolution there are plenty of things to talk about my friends we'll have a discussion tomorrow same time thank you okay friends we'll meet uh, tomorrow